the idea of this class is to really open up the options that we have for you and for your clients. The truth is for a long, long time, it's been very, uh, in the mortgage industry, we've had to be very vanilla or we've had, we, we haven't had to get very creative um, in the mortgage industry at all with just conventional loans, your government loans, your FHA loans and things like that. Well, there's a whole other world of options for people that can that can qualify or that maybe they, can, they can't qualify for your traditional financing, but will be able to qualify for other kinds of financing. So the idea today is we're going to get a little bit more tactical than we normally get. We're going to go over some of the loans that I really think that can help you save some of the deals that maybe you're in the listing side, or maybe you are in the middle of a deal that it's going it's going sideways. One of these programs can come in and help the day. Or if you have some clients, and this is the mindset that I want you to have when you look at this, when you listen to this, which is if you have talked to somebody in the past 12 months, 18 months that maybe wasn't able to qualify because of some of the reasons that I'm going to give. And if we have an alternative product that they can use, make sure that you call them, contact them because we may be able to help them immediately. So, Without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. If somebody again can give me an okay that you can see my screen, please. Okay, perfect. So the idea is no buyer left behind. If we can qualify a client, if there's an alternative program that can qualify that client, let's at least have that in our repertoire of options so that we can provide it to them. So a couple of things. Traditional financing right now, I have it's made in such a way that if you don't fit the exact parameters that the loan, the conventional loan and, and government loan types want them, then nobody can qualify. Things like if you are recently retiring, you're not showing enough income, but last year you made a lot of income, it's very, very hard to qualify. Things like somebody that just came into the state or came into this particular area and they were having a very successful business wherever they came from. But now that they're here, they're starting over, it's very hard to qualify them. Real estate investors, sometimes it's hard to qualify them. People that want to buy more than a four unit property or people that have more than 10 financing properties, those are people that normally on a conventional loan or an FHA loan will not be able to qualify. So why is this? Well, because normally if we're going to go with conventional or uh, normal financing, we're going to have to look at net income instead of gross income, which obviously if you're self-employed, you probably don't show as much income as you actually have. We need to look at self-employed tax returns. If somebody's self-employed, we need to look at the last two years of tax returns. If they have been in business for five years, then we can use the last year of tax return, but we still need at least one year of tax returns. We also cannot do any short-term financing on a regular conventional or an FHA loan, meaning you need to keep the loan for a long period of time, at least for seven months. The condos must be warrantable, which by the way, if you are, and, and listen, if you are a listing agent right now and you're taking a condo as your listing, it is extremely important for you to very quickly identify whether or not that condo is going to be able to be financed on a conventional loan. What do you need in order to do that? You need to know the condo budget. You need to ask for the accepted, the approved budget for 2024. You also need to get your master insurance policy for the HOA and Ideally, we need to ask a couple of questions to the HOA. For example, we need to know if there's one entity that owns more than 10% or 30% of all the units in there. And we need to know if there's more than 50% of the units that are for investment properties. Guys, this is super important because this is going to make it so that condo will be able to be financed on a traditional point or if we need to get creative with this type of financing. And as a listing agent, trust me when I tell you, this is gonna save, save you a lot of grief and a lot of time if you know that upfront. But anyways, normally, if you do any type of conventional Fannie, Freddie Mac type loan, well, we're gonna need to look at very, very like scrutinize the actual HOA and the actual community. We need to 
we wouldn't be able to qualify ITIN or foreign nationals. We can't close on the name of an LLC. You need to have a down payment always. And so sourcing funds, it's a nightmare. Meaning if you deposit $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 in your checking account, savings account, we need to know exactly where that money came from. In addition to that, a lot of people don't know this, but if you have an investor that wants to accrue a lot of property, after they hit 10 finance property, they're not going to be able to buy more properties. Guys, traditional financing, it's not necessarily made for a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Traditional financing is made for somebody that maybe has a job and, you know, th there's two or three people that are in the loan that have a couple of jobs and that's how they qualify, which is great. However, it left too many, it leaves too many people behind. So look, the way to think about this and, and the, the, the easiest way to think about it is there's three components of a mortgage. The three components of a mortgage are going to be your assets, meaning how much money you need to bring to the table, your income, meaning how much money you show that you make, and then your credit. Most people fundamentally that cannot qualify for a, pro for a, for a, property for to buy a house is because they lack in at least one of those three things. It's very important that you as the realtor understand why your clients are not qualifying for a particular house. And nine out of 10 is going to be one of those three things. It's important that you identify this because if you know that which is the reason why they don't qualify, then we can start looking at all these other different programs and see if any of these programs would allow them to have that or to not have one of those three. Because for the most part, what you're going to find on these programs is if you have two out of the three qualifications, then you'll probably be able to buy a house. So the first one that I want to go over like the first thing that i want to go over is the elephant in the room every time i talk about these programs there's a lot of people that just roll their eyes and goes here we go again this is you know this is a problem this is going to be a 2008 again a 2006 again this is what happened before and i've seen how this end this is not the same as before for a couple of reasons one you're going to notice that if you think about it a lot of the people that don't end up qualifying for a house are not people that are actually not going to make those payments. We're talking about a lot of people that maybe have the funds, right? They have the income, but they don't just don't show it in the tax returns in the proper way. So there's some programs that you're going to see where we don't require income, but we do need to show that the client can put a large down payment and that the client has reserves. So these are safer loans in many cases than the actual normal conventional loans. These are loans that are backed by the bank. For the most part, they're very well qualified buyers. Just They just simply don't fit in the typical traditional financing. We can close fast. So it's not one of those things where we need 90 days to close or 60 days to close. We can close them in the same 30, 35 days. And they're very consumer friendly, meaning a lot of these programs, if you're going to live in the property and all those things are not going to have any prepayment penalty. They're, none of these programs have negative amortization. All of those things that made those loans in the past bad loans are not in these loans anymore. So there's no negative amortization for the majority of this. You're not going to have prepayment penalties. So they're very, very consumer friendly. And the way that I like to think about this is a common sense approach. Look, in the mortgage industry, I'm sorry, but if you have a client that they recently retired or let's say that they didn't recently retire, but they switch careers where, or they switch, not even careers, they switch how they get paid from a W-2 to a 1099, even if the 1099, it's guaranteed and they're going to make way more money on the 1099 from a normal traditional standpoint with mortgages, they're not going to be able to qualify for another two years. That doesn't make sense. And this is why these programs exist. So let's start with these programs. The first one is people that don't have assets, people that don't have that down payment. Okay. We have a down payment assistant program. This is not the hometown heroes, but we have a down payment assistant program that would allow people to qualify. Even if they're not first time home buyers, there's a big 
thought that you can only qualify with a down payment assistant if you're a first-time home buyer. This is not the case with our program. We can give three and a half or five percent in down payment assistance, and there's two options. There's one that's forgivable, and there ones that's repayable. Meaning, there's one that if they live in the house for a long time, then that down payment assistant portion just disappears and they don't have to pay back. There's another one that they're going to have to make payments every single month and they have to pay it off uh, during the next 30 or 10 or 30 years. This only works for primary residences. So it's not a down payment assistance that you can use, even though you're not, you don't need to be a first time home buyer. This is not something that you can use for an investment property or a vacation home. It needs to be a house where you're going to move in. And by the way, you need to move in within 60 days after the closing. And look, the forgivable option has a 0% rate and it's forgiven after five years. Meaning if they live in the house for five years, that second loan, it's going to disappear and it's a 0% rate. The repayable option has a rate of 8.99% and it's repayable within 10 years. Okay. These loans are going to be combined with FHA and USDA, meaning you are going to buy the house with an FHA loan and there's going to be an additional down payment option up to 5% to cover the down payment and in many cases to cover the closing costs. I'm going to give you an example in a second. 620, it's the minimum credit score for the forgivable and 660 for the repayable. Just as a reference, for the hometown hero, 640 is the minimum credit score. We did a webinar on that last week. The max ratio is per AUS. What that means is you can qualify for a loan more than you would qualify for most down payment assistance programs because down payment assistance programs will cap you at 50%. Max ratio per AUS mean, means that you can probably qualify up to 56% of your debt to income ratio. And this is going to work for single family properties. This is going to work for condos as well, even though it says that it works for condos, but the truth is it is only working with FHA and USDA, meaning that the condo list is going to be very, very minimal, basically no condos, but it does work for a duplex and even a manufactured home if they have a 680 credit score. Guys, the point of this is if you have a client that has good enough credit score and good enough income, there's no income requirements on this loan. Even if they're not a first-time home buyer, they can qualify for a down payment assistant. This still exists. There's no income limits or anything like that on this kind of loans. Look, this is an example. This is the same example that we gave last week. We have a home, a home that's priced at $726. The loan amount is going to be $704,000. The down payment assistance, in this case, the hero, but the down payment assistance will be $35,000 in this case. And if they put just a 3% down payment, the excess money that's left over to cover in addition to the down payment to cover some of the closing costs is going to be about $13,000. Okay, we have the hometown heroes, and this is an example of the hometown heroes, but we also have the example of somebody that doesn't qualify for the hometown hero. They can still get something very similar to this with our down payment assistant program. So again, if somebody doesn't have the money to put down between the down payment assistant program and depending on the type of offer that we can negotiate or that you can negotiate, you get some closing cost help. Well, the client can come into the table with zero money out of pocket. The second loan that we want to talk about, what I want to talk about is no taxes, no problem. You have your clients that maybe haven't done their tax returns yet, or you have your clients that maybe don't show enough money in their tax returns. Well, people that don't have their taxes done, we have a couple of options. There's bank statement loans, there's 1099 loans, and there's profit and loss loans. If you think about this is people that have maybe, you know, 1099s like realtors or people that are handyman or they have a small business, even people that, you know, they have a big business, but they don't show enough money in their taxes. Well, these are the kind of people that will qualify for these type of loans. And look, we can do loans up to $4 million. The minimum was going to be one fifty. And the way that we calculate the income, it's a number of ways. We can do a 12 month average of the business or the personal bank statements. We can do a 24 month average of business and personal bank statements. We can also do a 12 month profit and loss statement where we don't even look at the bank statements, but we just look at a 12 month profit and loss, or we do a one year 1099. 
This is huge for people that maybe had a great year last year, but the year before wasn't such a good year. Instead of having to average the last two years, we can do something like a PL loan or a 1099 loan. It's a great program to know that it's possible to have. And look, for the bank statement loans, you don't even need to be self-employed. For the PL and for the 1099, they have to be self-employed. There's two years seasoning for foreclosure, short sale, bankruptcy, and didn't lose. So if somebody had a foreclosure, a short sale, a bankruptcy, they need to wait until two years went by for them to be able to qualify for this. Uh, the borrowers can own as little as 50% of the business. So 50% of the business, if they're 50-50, if they have a partner, they can still qualify for this loan as long as they own 50% of the business or 25% if we're going to do it on a personal loan. This works on a personal bank statements. This works for all occupancies, meaning this works for somebody that's buying a house to live in or as an investment property or as a vacation home. We also have a 40-year interest only available. This 40-year interest only, the way they work is 10 years of interest only payments, and then it changes to a 30-year fix. And look, the idea behind this is to keep those payments low for the first 30 10 years, and then you can refinance. There's no prepayment penalty on these loans if you're going to live in the property, so you can refinance at any point. The minimum down payment for a loan like this is going to be 10%, and the minimum credit score is 640 credit score, okay? We also have an option if somebody... For whatever reason, the bank statements are, you know, they have a lot of large deposits and things like that, and they don't want to go with the PL or the 1099 route. We can do uh, the bank statement loan and we can look at only the first page of the bank statement. Again, guys, a lot of clients, they don't qualify because they don't, they haven't been self employed for the two years or the last year was, you know, really, really good, but the one before wasn't that good. So the average brings them down. A lot of times, believe it or not, there's some there's some guidelines on conventional loans that if your income drops from one year to the other year, more than 20%, you immediately don't qualify. Even if you're starting at a higher point and then you ended at a high point, but you know, 20% below the, the two years ago, you still don't qualify. These are the type of loans that can help those clients. Okay, no self-employed requisite for bank for the bank statement loan. We we touch on that. Okay, we also have if you truly have no income, it's not just that you didn't put money in the tax returns, but if you really have no income, we have some options too. If somebody wants to buy an investment property, we can do a loan based on the cash flow of the property. Okay, so based on the potential rental income of that property. Now, the potential rental income needs to be at least 75% of the mortgage payment. So we can go even if the payment of the potential rent doesn't pay the full mortgage payment, even if it pays just 75%, we can still do the loan. The credit score needs to be at least a 660 credit score, and it requires a minimum of a 15% down payment. Mm -hmm. So for an investment property, if you don't want to show any income, we're talking about no 1099, no PL, no bank statements, no nothing. We need to have at least a 660 credit score and a 15% down payment. Now, these loans, with these loans, you're able to take the, the title as an LLC. So there's a lot more protection on these loans that you would have maybe on a regular conventional loan. We can go up to 2 million, although we can go over higher than 2 million if we do two appraisals, and there's a minimum loan amount of $75,000. Now, there's no income or employment information required on this one, and we also have the interest only options. Think about this. If we get a loan and the potential rental income, it's not super high because I don't know, the appraiser came in and it came in at a lower number, we can do the interest only option to lower that payment and then get us where we need to get. There's no limit on the number of properties that somebody gets on this ones too. We have some clients that want to get more than 10 invest investment properties. Well, they're not capped with this type of loans. And non-warrantable no, non condos are also allowed. Not just non-warrantable condos, but the condo tells. So if you're in an area that has a lot of condos, we can do these loans um, even if they don't necessarily follow everything that they need to follow from a conventional standpoint. Condo tells are allowed to. Okay, 
still no income, but let's say that you're not buying or your client is not buying this property as an investment property. This is for them to move into. We can still do the loan. We don't need any employment or income or anything like that. It's not a stated income because we do not even ask. We do not even fill that in the application. We need to have, you know, they need to have, it's going to say here, 25% down payment. Okay. Uh, if they, they can even do a cash out, but the cash out, we can only go up to 70%, but they need to put a 25% down payment. We can do the loan up to $3 million. And we need to make sure that the money that they're putting for down payment has been in the bank for at least 30 days. Now, the minimum credit score for a loan like this is going to be 680. And there's no sourcing of deposits up to 10% of the loan amount. Think about this. If somebody's doing a loan for $500,000, they can deposit in cash $40,000 into their account, and we're not going to ask them to source that deposit. Guys, if you've worked with loans, sourcing deposits is the biggest pain in the butt there is. This loan allows you to deposit up to 10% of the loan amount without having to show any proof of where that money came from. That's a big deal. So again, 25% down payment, 680 credit score. And as long as they have had that money for 30 days, we're good to go. Now there's a C, there's a reserve requirement on this loan, meaning that after the closing, we need to show that this client has enough money in the account to make payments, to make monthly payments. We need to have them have at least six months in reserves. So that's something that they need to have in their account after closing. The idea is not, it's that they don't spend their last dollar buying this house, that they still have at least six months in reserves. Okay, foreign nationals. This is for all the people that live outside of the country and want to invest here. We have a minimum loan amount of $75,000. We can go up to 2.5. Then again, we can go higher than that as long as we get two appraisals. It basically works as a DSCR program, meaning, we need to make sure that the property pays for itself. In this case, it can't be 75%. It has to be a one-to-one. -one. So if the property itself has a payment of $2,000, we need to make sure that that property can rent itself for at least $2,000. As long as that's the case, we're good to go. This is the biggest problem we have on these loans, guys. We need to make sure that the money has been in the US for at least 30 days. And we need to season the money for 60 days, meaning we need to see where the money came from for the last 60 days. But though, during those 60 days, 30 of those days need to be in America. Think about this. I have my money, let's say, in Colombia, and I've had my money there for 60, for 30 days. And then after that, I transferred it to America for 30 days. We're good to go because I have 30 days in America. And then before that, I have 30 days in Colombia. We're good to go. The point here is we need to know where that money came from for 60 days. We run into some issues with a lot of uh, foreign nationals that buy, that get these loans because they do a lot of cash deposits and cash transactions. That's what becomes a little tougher. So my recommendation is if we can have the money in America for 60 days, we should be 100% good to go. And it's just a matter of getting that appraisal done. And that's it. As long as the person has enough of a down payment and the house pays for itself, we will be good to go. There's a six month to 12 month reserve requirement. Now that reserve requirement, meaning if it's 12 months, they need to have 12 months worth of payment in their account left over. That money does not have to be in the US. That money can be in their own country. So that's a big deal. They can close in the name of an LLC as well. They can close in their own name and they have to set up at the end an auto pay from their American account. Guys, as long as they can come into the country legally, whether it's via visa or if it's a country that doesn't need a visa, then that's basically all we need. And they need to have a 30% down payment. So again, this loan, it's very simple. They need to have a 30% down payment. The funds need to be in America for 30 days. And we need to know where the funds came from the last 60 days. And as long as the property paid for it, it pays for itself, then we're good to go. Now, the ITIN numbers, we get a lot of questions on this. Basically, ITINs, we can do 2.5 million. We can do down to $125,000. 
with the one year seasoning requirement if they had any type of bankruptcy foreclosure or anything like that. Uh, two years for bankruptcy, I'm sorry, two years for bankruptcy and then one year for foreclosure. We can do a purchase and a refinance for that, but we can only do these loans for people that are going to live in the property. This will not work for a down for um, uh, investment property or a vacation home. The other thing is we have a maximum DTI of 50%, a 640% minimum credit. And the biggest question that I get asked is what's the minimum down payment for ITIN? Our minimum down payment for ITIN is going to be 25% down. One that has become very popular in the past, I don't know, 60 days, six months, four months, but it's been, it's become more and more popular. This is something that we have for a while. Uh, we were doing maybe one or twice a year and then you know, as the market, there's more inventory in this area of the market. We're seeing it a lot more. Look, this is a buy now and sell later. And this is the thing. If I am a seller of my property and I want to buy, right? I want to sell my house and I want to buy at the same time. I may have some issues when it comes to doing that. One of the issues can be because of my debt to income ratio, meaning I don't qualify for two mortgages at the same time, right? I need to sell my house. I need to buy another property. If I go to a normal lender and I try to buy the next house, what they're going to tell me is, okay, but you don't qualify before selling that house that you're selling because you can't upkeep both mortgages. Well, we have a solution for that problem. If the problem, if the problem is that the person doesn't qualify because of the debt to income ratio, well, we have a guaranteed backup offer. This guaranteed backup offer has a cost of $2,500. And the way it works is we put an offer on the house of the person that's selling it. Again, let's use me as an example. I'm selling property A, I'm buying property B. What the bank will do is they put an offer on property A. That offer, it's a 120-day offer. What that allows me to do as a lender is it allows me to ignore completely that debt and be able to qualify for property B without counting the debt from property A. So that's a big deal. Now, you have 120 days. So if in these 120 days, somebody else offer me a better offer for my house, I can sell it to that other person and there's no harm nor foul. And that has a cost of $2,500. What happens if nobody sends me an offer? If nobody gives me an offer, what's going to end up happening is the bank is going to buy the house from me and they're going to go ahead and sell it right away too. Now, when they sell it, whatever they make, they're going to give 90% of the proceeds of that sale back to the seller. Guys, look. Right now, there's a lot of clients that want to move out of their house. And one of the reasons they can't is because they simply can't qualify without or with having both those two uh, mortgages. This is a solution for that problem. I'm happy to send you the flyers on this, the information on this. I'm happy to talk to your sellers, but this is a solution for that problem. It's an easy solution. It's $2,500 and they are, they are going to be good to go. You as the realtor, you're protected because you still get the sale of the property and you still get the purchase. Even if the guarantee backup offer is the one that wins, if, if after 120 days the house didn't sell, they'll still use you to list the house. So you don't lose out on anything. So that's problem number one. If I'm selling and I'm buying at the same time, let's say I don't qualify carrying two mortgages, that solves that problem. The second problem that I might have is a down payment issue. Maybe I qualify, but all my money is tied into my property. So I need to take money out of the house I'm selling in order to be able to put it as a down payment for the house I'm buying. Well, that's where the bridge loan comes into play. The bridge loan is simple. It's very easy. The bridge loan. If I have a property, property A, I can take a loan on the equity I have of this property and then use that loan towards the down payment for the next house. These loans are expensive. It's a 9.9% .9 rate, so basically a 10% rate, and it has a fee of 3 to 4%. This is the thing. If, I am t if I'm paying a 10% rate, that's basically 
uh, it's not that big of a deal because it's a short term loan. I'm only taking that loan for maybe a month, two months max. The fee, the fee, it hurts a lot more when we talk to the clients that they care about that fee a lot more. But think about this. They're taking the fee only on the amount that they're borrowing for the down payment. In a lot of cases, maybe they're only borrowing $50,000 or $40,000. So they end up paying a minimal fee for this whole thing so that they can secure the house that they want. I recommend to all my clients, look, let's know that this option exists. And if the perfect property comes into the market before you're able to sell your house, we know that this is a solution that we can use. We are licensed all over the country. So even if your client is up north and buying here, we can still do the loan up north, pull money from the equity of their house to buy their house here. We can do a loan that's up to 90% of the departing residents. So again, we can go up to a 90%. Obviously, most people would just take however whatever amount they need for the down payment. Now, what if you have a client that just doesn't want a loan? Okay, they go, look, I have plenty of equity on my house. I'm selling a million dollar house and I'm buying a $300,000 house. But they don't want to sell their stocks. They don't want to do all of this because they're going to pay a lot more taxes. Well, what we can do is we can buy the house that they want to buy a cash. So again, in this example, I'm selling property A, I'm buying property B. I don't want any loan. So what we're going to do as the bank is we can buy property B for them. Okay. And it's a cash offer. It's a 10 day closing. There's no pre-approval. There's no application. There's nothing because we know that he has enough equity or that I have enough equity. And then I have 180 days to sell my house and pay for that and buy that house back from the bank cash. Okay. So the bank buys property B for me and I have 180 days to sell property A and take the proceeds to buy it from the bank. This is a solution for people that don't want a loan at the end of the day. And honestly, that we need to move very, very quickly because we don't even need to get an approval or anything like that. We just want to put a cash offer on a house because it came in the market. There's a cost to this. It's also expensive. It's a 3% fee and there's a 10% rate as well. Again, the idea of these loans for the rate is to be very, very quick. And then the fee, we would just take the fee on the amount that you're, or the amount that we're pledging on that house or the amount that we're using to purchase that home. Okay. And at the, in this point, you don't need to have a long-term fee, a long-term loan or anything like that. Okay. There's other options besides this. We have an asset depletion loan. You have a client that don't show any income, but they have a lot of assets. We can take all the money that they have and divide it by 60. And whatever that number gives us, that's what we're going to use for their income. A lot of times, guys, we have clients that maybe, you know, they have uh, I don't know a large retirement account or, or la large investment accounts, but they don't show a lot of income. Well, we can take those accounts, divide them by 60, and that's going to be the income we're going to use. We also have doctor loans. Since the hometown hero happened, a lot of doctors are trying to get some down payment assistance and trying to, you know, inquire on what they can qualify. The problem is doctors for the most part are going to make more than the max allow income limit for hometown heroes. Well, the doctor loan honestly is better than the hometown heroes because the doctor loan doesn't require any down payment up to a million dollars, just a 3% down payment up to $2 million. It doesn't have a mortgage insurance payment and it doesn't need to have two years of self-employed requirement. And by the way, for a lot of doctors that maybe just haven't graduated yet or they graduated, but they haven't finished their, um, you know, they haven't finished their, their beginning portion. I don't know how, what's that called, but, uh, they have a contract already. As soon as they're finished, they're, they, they finish that their training. Well, we can use that future income. So it's a very, very flexible loan with no mortgage insurance and no down payment up to a million dollars, which is, I mean, again, that's probably one of the best loans out there. We also have a fix and flip loan. A lot of people that want to buy, renovate, and sell. You need a minimum the credit score of 660. Obviously, in this case, they don't have to be owner-occupied. And uh, we can, as long as they put a 15% down, as long as they have experience, they can qualify as long as after the repair, the loan-to-value is less than, or 
at or less than 70%. So a 15% down payment, as long as the repairs are going to make it so that the property ends up having an equity point, an equity position of more than 30% or at least 30%. Uh, these loans are 30 percent are 12 12 month loans and interest only payments and you only pay interest on the amount that you start uh taking or drawing for your purchase what's cool about this one is even though the more experience you have the less money down you need to put this allows people that uh, th this one is open for people that don't have any experience so if you want to start dabbling into fix and flip loans, we can start with this loan and obviously the terms will get better and better as you gain more experience. That's it guys. Look, it's fast. There's so many options out there. Um, I want to open it up for Q&A, but my invitation to you guys is do the QR code. The QR code is going to send you to a meeting with us. If you see any of these programs that are interesting, set up a 15 minute call with me. One of the options you're gonna have in the QR code is a 15 minute call. Set up that 15 minute call with me and let's go over the scenario that you have. Because again, I have seen a lot of clients that have been declined by other lenders simply because they didn't know that these type of loans existed. And you know, in 38 minutes, we went over probably 10 loans that solved the majority of the problems that people have out there, which is income, assets, and credit. So I'm gonna leave it open for Q&A. If anybody has any questions, you can drop it in the chat. Um, it can be any any questions on, on any of the specific ones that we went over or just any open questions on, on uh, other problems that you may see on your conventional loans that we can probably help out with. Well, if there's no questions, uh, again, if the question maybe that you have is not a question that you want to put in the chat for everybody to read, just set up a 15 minute call with me. And uh, guys, thank you for joining. Thank you for giving me the time. And like I said, please don't decline anybody without at least talking to us because chances are we have a loan for them.